live from the Spira Clinic. Sarah, for your graduation. Yeah. Okay, so I see you have some notes. So I'm going to give yes. you the floor. I'm really glad I wrote these. Um, so I've had CRPS for two and a bit years now. I developed CRPS after a surfing accident, which happened in November 2020. Um, at that time, I was a pretty typical 21 year old, like enjoying life. And so fracturing my ankle then felt like the true end of the world. But little did I know what was ahead of me. Five months after my accident, I was diagnosed with CRPS. And at that time, I was in what I now know as being a flare. I remember saying to the doctor who diagnosed me, this hurts more than when I fractured my ankle. And I felt crazy saying that at the time, but now I know it really did hurt worse than that. And the pain I felt was very real. Over time, my pain and other symptoms worsened, despite throwing myself into every therapy I could. What started in my right ankle became both feet, then my right hand, and then the left. And a few months later, it started affecting my back and legs. And by the time I got here, most of my body had some symptoms with my gut, legs, my right hand, and my back being the worst affected. I had been in physical therapy, occupational therapies, pain programs, tried various cocktails of pain medications, and I didn't want to do anything invasive before coming here. When I started at the Spiro Clinic, I had a blanket on me a lot of the time due to allodynia. Dr. B called those my blanket days. I had trouble speaking much because of pain. Now you can't shut me up. <laughs> I could barely get to one room, from one room to the other, and some days a few steps was too much. I couldn't wear socks without pain. Shoes were excruciating, clothing hurt. My right hand was severely affected, often preventing me from cooking, typing, or playing my piano. Nights were awful. Pain kept me up until the point I could no longer physically be conscious anymore. I remember flaring early on from the easy therapies, like microcurrent and lymph, just because being touched was so painful. I had gastroparesis and other gut, gut issues I didn't know the extent of before seeing Dr. H. I now often get being made fun of for being an Australian with the worst vitamin D she's seen. <laughs> Back then, every day pushed me to the point of tears. And I was fearful that at 23, I was closer to the end of my life rather than starting it. It's been a lot of hard work and discipline to get to where I am today but it's nothing compared to how hard all of that was. Now I'm going on one to one and a half mile walks nearly every day, which is one and a half to two and a half kilometers for those back home in Australia. I'm cooking again, going out with friends, and I actually feel like a young adult again. And I hadn't felt that way in over two years. I'm going back to Melbourne and I get to study creative writing at university, which I'm super excited about. And I'm looking forward to living again rather than just surviving. I'm not completely pain-free yet, although I spend a lot of my time comfortable, pain-free, and I have all the knowledge, tools, and gadgets to keep this nervous system of mine in line. Okay, now for some thank yous. I'm going to try and keep it together. Um, I want to start by thanking the people back home who have supported me to my journey to here. You believed in me and my decision, and those who financially supported me, including over 100 GoFundMe donors, I really could not be here without you. <coughs> Special thank you to LJ, who came across the other side of the world. I love you so much, and you're such an incredible human. Karen, who I met here, um, <laughs> she was my Airbnb host. I didn't have family here a lot of the time, and she has supported me in so many ways. I want to say thank you to all the staff here. You bring hope and joy to us, and we're so grateful for the work that you do. A lot of it we don't even know. I want to especially thank a few people. I want to thank Eric and Shane for having their door open, early doors, and their encouraging conversations that kept me going. Jen and Katie for the safe, fun, <laughs> safe and fun space they create. Dr. B for remembering all the little things and the big things, your memories and say. Dr. Lauren and Dr. T for our great conversations. Amanda, who's helped me make up for all the lost time of hugs. Tyler and Heather for your calm presence and being a place where I could both laugh and cry.
Pam and Tyler, who I only spent one week with in Cold Laser, but who helped me get through the toughest week at Spiro. Dr. K, who also came to the rescue that week. Jennifer always saying hi and making me feel welcome from day one. I also want to say thank you to the community of patients here that have made me feel like I was surrounded by family and friends, despite being so far away from home. CRPS seems to be the awesome people disease. <laughs> um, I truly didn't expect to become as close as I, as I have to so many of you. And I really look forward to the future where I can look back on how insane all of this was. And lastly, Katie, <laughs> you've been my rock these last 18 weeks. I've never felt as many emotions in the space of an hour as I have with you. <laughs> um, thank you for making something so challenging fun and giving me the confidence to continue my treatment in Australia. I may be biased, but you're my favorite NMR therapist. <laughs> Storyteller, whip cracker, and encourager. Um, and I'm going to miss you very much. I think with uh, many of our patients, it becomes easy for them to have moments in treatment where they feel stuck or they, they'll come in your room and they'll say, I'm not getting any better, you know? And we have to take out their files and say, look how this was on day one. And I think that even as a therapist, working with the same person for so long, even sometimes we forget where we started, right? Because me and Sarah shared so many moments where we were like, imagine if we would have done this on the first week, right? Yeah. We couldn't put your feet in water. You couldn't put your hands over your head. I mean, not even past this. You've came so far. And I've watched you kick your own butt on that machine, so I have no doubt that you're going to do great when you go home as well. Yeah. And I'm proud of you. You ready for this? Yeah, I have one little thing. Sorry. <laughs> um, so for me, I, because I'm not like 100% better, I was like thinking about what this means. So I've written it down before I ring the bell. So ringing this bell, I recognize how far I've come, that I'm no, li li no longer living a life with CRPS is something to fear, where pain doesn't prevent me from the things or the people I love. And it's a commitment to continue to apply what I've learned here in my daily life in Australia. So basically, I'm going to kick some ass. <laughs> <laughs>